Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and I accidentally hit end turn, and we actually lost an immortal that was standing on this. But that's mostly just down to the fact that these cities are just hitting a little bit harder now. Uh, but, you know, and he was also pretty low health, but that's okay. Uh, it was just the fact that he got hit also by this, um, this naughty little pikeman that showed up. We also want to pillage this. Um, now, can I... Oh, I should totally bring you back to become a trebuchet, and you will become a trebuchet as well. We'll plink the city of Eridu. Ooh, can we plink you here? Plink you there. And then will this smash kill? Hopefully getting us a promotion as well. Excellent. The city of Eridu is going down. I think our main goal is to finish the war with Sumeria. And then think about who our next target is. I think our next target is Dido. Even if... Well, I mean, the Ottomans would be a much easier target. And we could also kill Hattusa. Although maybe we want to keep Hattusa. We should at the very least, we should at maybe go for a trade route with Hattusa. And we should probably get a trade route to Adana from the capital. The idea here being that we have a road to follow. One of Persia's bonuses um, that I haven't actually talked about yet is that roads built in your territory are one level more advanced than usual. So we can kind of get around our empire a little bit easier. So trading with someone and then declaring war on them is actually a really effective way to get a, basically a highway into their empire. Um, now, these immortals are going to start falling off soon, but we have a ton of gold in the bank to turn them into man-at-arms, which is going to be the play, I think. And it'll be probably some sort of mercenaries-based thing. I may also go to Reformed Church here to go for Theocracy. For um, I really want the Wars of Religion card for that plus four combat spent with fighting non-religious units fights a civilization that follows another religion. And then maybe if we could figure out, like if we are doing orthodoxy, as our majority religion and we can hold that that's a little bit of extra combat strength against other players that just helps keep these man at arms and the thingies relevant i i do want to research gunpowder but i want to be careful about when and how and where i do it i also really want to get the armory in the city of susa but i also need to build some infrastructure here so it, it's kind of it's one of those things where there's just a lot happening in this particular city that needs to be addressed i think i will go ahead and buy a builder because we could use maybe another pyrodiza there Let's harvest here to get a builder, because um, it's worth quite a bit of gold. And then we'll kind of maybe improve those sheep. The city will grow in one turn. So I guess I'll just put another turn into... Do I want to go for a settler here? I don't think I have any particularly important cities that I want to settle. I mean, I could settle something here in theory to just add to the number of things I can go for. And why not? At this point, why not? Just quickly squeeze out an extra settler. Our empire is starting to become big enough to where, like, we can get away with stuff like that. Let's keep the war effort moving. You're going to promote with Tortoise. You're moving down to Lagash. We're blasting that city. Uh, we could direct attack. It's a lot of damage, but this guy's going to get shot by quite a lot of stuff. So we want to, we want to play things a little bit more careful. We don't want to be losing units no for no reason. We have a pretty big military, but it could fall apart pretty quick if we're not careful. So can we step out of here? That city is full loyalty. Let's keep going. I love how far my units can run. The The combination of Akkad and Persia is honestly kind of insane, actually. The fact that my units do full damage to walls. Also, maybe I should um, levy Akkad. Although maybe I should wait until... Well, I could levy them and turn them into Man-at-Arms. And then we would be... We could use the Man-at-Arms as our mainline uh, city smashers in the war with um, Tyre. We may kill Jerusalem. Although I'm tempted to keep city-states alive here. We're going to go ahead and take the pillage here for the heal. I want my you to run forward. I'm going to get my trebuchet to blast that city. We've taken the city of Eridu. Let's keep bringing the trebs forward. This guy actually has a promotion, which is kind of fun and interesting. You also have a promotion. I do think urban warfare really helps a lot. And an elite guard being able to attack twice is amazing, especially on immortals. It's one of the best promotions immortals can get. So I think at Lagash, we want to make sure that we pillage all of the stuff. So there's stirrups pillage for the science. We definitely want printing. Researching printing is basically just a plus three combat strength boost across the board because it gives you plus one diplomatic visibility with everyone in the game. Let's continue to blast Lagash. I think I will do some melee attacking here to get it done, but I also want to get over to the ziggurats next turn. So we got to keep we got to keep things like a little bit above board. I want to smash the city. I'll attack it from the north because we'll do a lot of damage to the walls. I'll attack it from the east and the south. Um, get you to there, shoot. Ooh, I should definitely put a unit inside the city of Babylon to keep it from flipping. Um, but we should be able to take Uruk and Lagash in the next couple of turns. And there's a ton of pillageable resources here. Plus, actually, he built the Statue of Zeus, which is quite an excellent wonder if we want to go for any sort of anti-cavalry stuff. You can see here, three archers, three spearmen, and a 50% production boost towards anti-cavalry units. Also, potentially a little bit of, you know, culture coming from that when we build theater squares later. Let's blast the city of Lagash. We're going to move you one tile to the right. We're going to pillage you, pillage you, and blow up Lagash is now the time. Yeah, I think now the time is to take the city for real. 
Uh, then we need to like swivel some units around to the, um, oh man, there's even another city down here in Isin. That's amazing. Um, but yeah, we definitely want to get down here to start doing like pillages and all that jazz. You are going to go ahead and pop back to the city of Babylon. We'll bring you forward. You're going to hit Uruk in the face. I guess, ooh, can you get to Eridu for loyalty? And you're going to pop back for a heal. We'll just keep bringing up new units. You'll smash the city once. And, ooh, could pillage this for faith. Awesome. Ooh, you might die, actually. I might have made a mistake there. Although only one shot is happening. Uh, let's keep this city. Okay, loyalty is pretty bad here. Mostly from Uruk. If we can take out Uruk, I think we'll be fine. Um, let's promote you. Uh, well, I'll move you one tile to the right, and then I will promote you a commando. I'll move you one tile to the right, shoot the city. Move you over here, shoot the city. And you can shoot that encampment just for the experience. And you can move to here and shoot the city to bring down the walls ever so slightly. Otherwise, we are looking great. Definitely, this is a granary monument city. Well, probably monument granary first. Um, but, dude, we are in such a good position right now. It's kind of... It's kind of unexpected. I didn't I didn't realize it was going to go this well, this game. I'm going to pop my builder down here to the front lines because there's quite a, quite a bit of tiles down here that need to be improved. I could also buy builders near the front line to do some repairs. We'll, we'll do that as time goes on. That's part of the pillaging and process and all that sort of stuff that's happening. I'm loving the fact that I have so much positive gold. Really, like... The f having positive gold is something you usually don't have when you're at war. Um, so the fact that Persia is just so good at generating gold really makes such a huge difference to how the empire plays when it comes to a war game. Um, it really is just... it's it, it, Persia is a league of its own when it comes to the sustainability of their war. Most civs struggle a little bit to sustain their wars. Persia absolutely does not. I'm going to take the tortoise promotion on you... You don't have a promotion in the bank. I need to take the city of Uruk, so I'm going to shoot it quite a bit first. Then you're going to move forward and hit it. Come on, give me the kill. Perfect. Okay, Uruk has been taken. We get to keep that city. Let's make sure we're getting in position to do a little bit of pillaging. You're going to heal. Pillaging, pillaging. Um, where's my catapults? There we go. Get you forward. Isin is now under siege, which I think is Gilgamesh's final city. We're up to 45 science and 39 culture, which doesn't quite put us like competitive with the AI yet, but the amount of production, the amount of construction we're doing, we are building man at arms now to refill our our, our, our ranks, um, which is kind of interesting mechanically to be, you know, having immortals with man at arms in front of them. Culturally, I think Reformed Church is the play here. It's a semi-militaristic government, which is kind of how you want to play um, Persia and it also has faith generation which is great with Persia's bonuses the fact that we're conquering cities by the way is giving us that 20% production boost across our empire which uh, the way I want you to think about that is imagine for every five turns of production we do we get plus one turn okay so it's like every five turns that passes we like every time you conquer a city your entire empire gets one turn of free production over the course of five turns it's insanely insanely powerful more immortals are coming out we definitely want to do more mortals. This city, I don't even have holy sites unlocked yet. I should totally take the time to get these one turn texts and then come back for printing. Should definitely get these holy sites repaired. I'm going to go ahead and get started on a warrior because we should have enough. Well, we won't have enough iron. Well, let's keep, keep, we want, melee units are the name of the game. Like the fact that we have a card is insane. I guess it is a true start location, so it's, it's kind of to be expected if there's going to be one there. We'll repair the monument, then we'll go for the granary, and then we just got Isin. Isin will fall. We don't want to attack the city in melee yet, though. Uh, let's go ahead and improve that farm, because that would make the city of Lagash actually grow. We're going to need a lot of farms in here. We just mostly... There's going to be a very heavily farmed area, so there's going to be a lot of population in here, just not doing a whole lot other than, like, just passively growing. Uh, which is, a, like, a totally valid strategy for that area of my empire. Um, I definitely think we want to par we want to put Paradises next to this holy site that's worth a lot of culture and gold. Okay, let's move the trebuchet up. We'll blast the city to bring down the walls. There is a thing here that we want to pillage, but we don't have to go for it immediately. You can... Yeah, I feel pretty safe smashing the city. Uh, just the same way I feel safe smashing your mom. It looks like the bonus movement has run out now. But, like, I mean, look what we did with all that bonus movement. We obliterated this entire civilization. Okay, Man at Arms finished in Susa. Let's keep building those warriors. Just, just need to keep using up that iron. Uh, speaking of iron, I wonder, do we have another copy of iron nearby? Let's have a look. Okay, so it looks like there's iron in here. Where's the horses? Okay, there's horses down here. So, yeah, taking on um, Phoenicia will be super great 
for our military capabilities. Also, we might want to settle a couple of these oases. There are like luxuries and strategic resources down here. We'll have to figure out exactly how we're going to want to do that. Um, but this is definitely like, I wouldn't call it like settleable, but there might be a city or two like this. I feel like there's a city near this oasis because we just pick up both of those incense tiles. There's a city near this oasis to get that niter and that incense tile. There's also a couple of sheep um, that we can make use of. So we'll, have, we'll have to do a little bit of planning. There's a little bit of expansion, a little bit of settling. And, and the great thing, when you go for an early war game, um, you can totally transition into settling uh, because your settlers are so cheap. So the big thing I want to do is I want to trade with Hattusa eventually. So I think I'm going to trade with Rostavi. Even if it's not the most amazing trade route right now, the important thing is that it will establish a trading post 48 turns from now. Is, could I get one better? No, yeah, I think I think Rostavi is to play. So 48 turns from now, I will have a trading post here, which will set me up to trade with Hattusa for the rest of the game. So he is begging me for peace. I'm sorry, Sumeria, but it is time for it, it is your time to go, basically, is what I'm saying here. Now, there's sailing completed. We have access to theology now. So we can come up to the city of Kutaisi and actually repair that holy site. Let's trebuchet this, move forward, trebuchet this. Then we want to make sure we get our pillages in. It's a lot of gold to leave on the table if we don't get it. Move you forward. You can blast the city. You've used up your movement. Go ahead and swap with these units. Come forward. Can we get it? Can we get it? Oh, Gilgamesh is done. And the really sick as hell thing here is that we actually just picked up a couple of extra encampments. So these will eventually be like reasonable military production cities. Eventually is the key word there. So we'll need to do like some amount of stuff. Granary monument. Let's go for Hattusa. I want to be Susan or Hattusa. I'll go to max rank with a card and then I'll just hold on to my envoys because there's nothing really there that like does me a lot of favors. I guess one point in Jerusalem is nice. It's like plus one faith in, you know, my shrines, which is okay, I guess. Pop a Pyradiza down there. Look at that. Pyradiz nuts. That's a two, three in terms of culture and gold. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful tile. Right. So now that Sumeria is dead, we got to think about what's that going to be our approach to taking out Dido. I think we're going to settle a city right near Dido as a sort of bridge to, uh, in terms of loyalty, right? We settle a city, one of these tiles will drop a city. And then I think we, you know, we just begin moving this huge carpet of immortals over. Some of them are going to become man at arms, I think. Um, at this phase of the game, I think they're a little bit too weak to remain as they are and break those cities. So we are going to have to push, push, push. Um, but we can take a little bit of time to heal up before we start moving. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start upgrading a bunch of them to Man at Arms, which means I need to take out the raid policy card, plug in professional army, definitely need to keep conscription. Feudal contract is worth keeping. Retainers is honestly really damn good too. So it's kind of hard for me to not have all three of these cards plugged in right now. Producing new units isn't as important as upgrading the old ones. So I'm going to have retainers in. Settler popping out of the city, Al Kal Kalaki which means we could now start working on temples, which might allow us to start recruiting warrior monks because we do have the Eastern Orthodoxy religion. It might be a little bit late to the game to go for warrior monks, but I mean, the extra faith wouldn't be a miss. The other thing we could produce are just builders or actually just go into military unit production, like just start making immortals um, to assist in the, you know, production of units. So I think maybe the immortal play is the play. You know, just start producing warriors, start producing immortals, get ourselves going. Like we just, we need more unit flow, basically is what I'm saying at this phase of the game. Now, the city of Eridu has some tiles that I can take. Uh, Pasargade, you own, Shuna, you own. So who owns this tile, actually? Looks like it's owned by Eridu, but Eridu can't actually work it. So I'm going to give it to my capital city because my capital city could use another nice growth tile um, with a bit of production on it. Then again, Ashuna as a city just fundamentally does not have production tiles. So maybe I can swap a growth tile to the capital instead because keeping my capital growing would be amazing. There's also a ton of nice farmables here. Um, yeah, we definitely want a couple of builders in the capital area to get some of these things improving. So the unfortunate thing is we do have a declared friendship with Dido. So we have to wait at least 17 turns before we can declare the surprise war. Um, but that does just leave me lots of time to like focus on building up my empire. And it means I don't have to like rush to get in her face with my army. Commercial hub completed in the capital. Let's crack out a market. We want that trade route. 
be really, really nice. We've got the Holy Sight and Kutaisi. Let's quickly grab that shrine. That's four faith per turn that we will be able to make use of once we're in Reformed Church and we have access to the Grand Master's Chapel. Um, we can use our faith income as a way to sustain our military adventures. Let's go ahead and keep moving you up, grabbing those tortoise promotions to make you strong against city attacks. And yeah, I think I need to bring some of these guys back to become man in arms. Let's switch you over to producing an immortal. We just want to be, we just really want to be spending the iron. And so building immortals is an efficient way for me to get extra military units. So that's kind of like what I'm doing. Okay, let's drop a little old sheep pasture here. Awesome. Um, I think because I'm out of iron, some of these guys aren't healing. So I'm just going to start moving them over so we can kind of get the big old wave of units ready. Um, I suppose now we can begin the process of mass mounted arming because the ranged attack on these guys just isn't as important as it used to be. This will slightly eat into our gold per turn because these units are a little bit more expensive to maintain. Um, but the huge advantage is right now, Man at Arms are medieval era and they have 10 more melee strength than 10 more melee strength than immortals. So probably want to keep a little mixture of immortals as my unit killers, right? The people who will fight back. Okay, the city of Ashuna has no districts of its own. So I'm going to quickly go ahead and buy a builder in here. Uh, we'll continue to build farms and stuff to try to extend the amount of housing this can have because uh, the city will mostly not be very useful for a very long time until we can do some uh, construction. One thing I am tempted to go for here is if we go to the city overlap, we've got like an eight city overlap right here. Um, and Ashuna could build that industrial zone, which would take care of the fact that the city does not have amazing production and also lead me into like late game production. So I'm kind of tempted to come in here, swap that tile, grab this, drop a plus five industrial zone on that tile and go for that the second that we finish this monument. And this will just really help the city go from being kind of crappy with no production to actually having a pretty decent production line. Now, I'm wondering if I can trigger the, are you going to declare war on me thing while we're friends? So I think if I just line up a whole bunch of troops on our border, maybe we can make that happen. I think I have enough man at arms for what I want to do. Um, I don't need any more. Where's my great general? There you are down here. So I have to bring you up towards the center of the of the line. Uh, but we've got a huge army arc ready to attack Phoenicia. She does have some knights, which are a little bit scary, but I think we can make this work. I kind of regret going for the friendship with her. I didn't think I would kill Sumeria quite so quickly. It's fine now. I'm going to probably avoid friend friending people uh, for the next period of the game. I'm strong enough to stand on my own without needing friends. We have met Greece, which is cool. Uh, we met Portugal too, which is kind of neat. Uh, we met Victoria. Weird. Did, did we just get like the, I don't know how we met so many people. Um, we did just get printing. Oh, diplomatic visibility maybe gave me access to more people in the game. So let's have a little bit of a look at like, let's do a little stats check. Okay. England is a little scary. 140 science per turn. Portugal is a little scary. 130 science per turn. Culturally, I would say I'm on par with the AI. Scientifically, I'm a little bit behind, but that's because I've invested so much in military and the more... Um, I continue to invest in military, actually. I think the more I will start to stand out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get another builder in Ashuna because I have a lot of cash flowing. we got the monument in Eridu. We want a granary in here as well to allow the city to continue to grow. Scientifically, it would be cool to go for education. We do need to bump up that science a bit. I, I'm definitely feeling the heat scientifically. The great thing about printing is that's going to give us plus, plus three combat strength against the AI when we finally declare war. We need to be paying attention very, very, very carefully to any pop-ups. Like if Dido invites us to attack her, we must take that pop-up. So very, very important that we're, we're paying attention there. Now, one thing we would also like to do is to upgrade to Crossbowman to get the metal casting boost. And I do actually still have two archers. So I'm going to go ahead and upgrade the archer in Susa and the archer in Passargade, which will get me metal casting boosted. And that's actually a pretty decent amount of science to get boosted. In the city of Rustavi, um, Campus would be fantastic. Don't know, maybe... Maybe we could justify a theater square more readily. I really want that culture. We could also be producing military. The culture is going to be important so that we can get the nationalism faster. I think building a theater square in Rustavi would shave quite a few turns off of that. It'll take 15 turns for the theater square to finish. That'll get both of these Pyrodeses to give plus one culture. So it's effectively a plus two theater square, potentially plus three if I can get this farm replaced. Okay. And so by the time we get diplomatic service, we'll have a significant bump to our culture per turn, which will get us nationalism a few turns sooner. So I think that's a totally fine thing to go for. It would also be good to go for ritual to get the Gilded Vault. I'm going to take that. And then I'm also going to prioritize getting to banking because there's a lot of culture locked up in the banking 
uh, the banking uh, building. I'm going to tell all of my units on this front line to go ahead and fortify while we wait for our opportunity to strike. Okay, Gustavus Adolphus, Renaissance era. Let's go ahead and recruit him. Now, this guy could allow us to get a bombard a little bit earlier than we would normally be able to get a bombard. I don't know if we necessarily want to go for that. Um, the other thing that he does is because he is a Renaissance and industrial era guy, he would actually allow us to play around with bombards and cuirassiers and potentially even even just have musketmen be an option for us, um, which is kind of an intriguing opportunity. I'm going to go ahead and gold purchase the stable and the armory in the capital because I want the gunpowder Eureka. Um, and I don't need my gold right now for anything. I'm going to go ahead and grab myself a trader because I have more trade routes available. And it's an important piece of empire-wide infrastructure that you should be paying attention to. We'll soon be able to go for a man at arms. You move in there to get upgraded. So I think I'll settle right here. This should give me a, a decent amount of loyalty. Yeah, it should be fine to maintain loyalty in here. We'll just go for the monument. There's a shred of culture that'll come in. These cities will take a while to pay themselves off, but they will pay themselves off over the long, long haul. Let's move this builder over to here. Um, ooh. I think this quarry is actually pretty important to get the city like any production. Now there is something to be there is something to be said if we think we would get oh no we would get an industrial era great general. I was going to say if we if we thought we were going to get another Renaissance era great general, turning Gustavus into a bombard is actually not a terrible move. But it doesn't look like that's what's going to happen. There's mathematics, so we do have access to the diplomatic quarter, which is going to be an important uh, building that we get up ideally in our capital when we get to ten population in here. So that's going to be part of the the plans. I'm going to pop a plantation down here, and I'm going to go ahead and gold purchase a. Oh, I can't quite afford a builder, right? That's right. I spent all my money. Well, I, I'll I'll just pop a quarry right here to give Eridu another production tile, and I'll start building up my faith economy with things like temples. Uh, eventually, we will want to build up relationships with um, places like Yerevan, places like Jerusalem. In fact, I'm going to go up to a level two relationship with Yerevan right now to get that plus two faith in the temple building because that's effectively a fifty percent uh, faith bonus to temples, right? It's a super super. Super big boost. Really, really good to go for that. I think a Pyrodiza right here is pretty good. Uh, we definitely maybe want to consider going for some more productive tile improvements as well. So actually, you know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to go for the builder. Uh, we don't have many chops, so I'll just quickly get a builder in this city so we can lay down some mines. Uh, because I, I'm I'm lacking production. That's one of Persia's weak points is you're so incentivized to build things that aren't mines that it ends up being like a bit of a production struggle. Okay, we got another trade route in the capital. Something we could consider doing for a couple of these like really bad cities is actually dropping a trader in them. I think Ur is a really good candidate for a trader because it just it just has such poor production in the local area. Um, I will tell the city to focus on production because it's at its housing limit. And this trader sent to the capital will provide it with like really, really big benefits. There's something to be said for going for the Forbidden City. I'm going to go ahead and gold purchase a heavy chariot here just so I can explore this corner because I don't have a unit in the nearby area and I forgot to explore it earlier. In my capital, I think we'll we'll build a trebuchet. Remember, that's what, that's what the capital is for when it's not building anything else. It's meant to be there to build like those important buildings. Now, do we want a cathedral? Let's have a look at what Islam does for us. World Wonders, I you know, I mean, I think I would have preferred Eastern Orthodoxy. It's a little bit better. Um, meeting houses are better. Stewardship is a little bit better for me. I prefer the science and gold rather than anything else. I think what we'll do is we have to take a look at Kutaisi, and what could this city do to really take us to the next level when it comes to like a yield? Um, there's actually a couple of really useful things you could do. One of them is to build an industrial zone on that tile right there. Um, and if I'm putting an industrial zone on that tile right there, then this should naturally just very obviously be an aqueduct. And I think it's about the phase of the game where I should consider doing that. Uh, and then this tile right here is very clearly a very easy like theater square. It's boosting all these things. So let's get that industrial zone and that will serve as a long-term way to deal with Persia's production problems when we eventually get to the industrialization technology and we can start using the AOE production from factories. Because that's where it's six production for every city in the in range, which is effectively like adding two people working like a mine or like a mine and a half worth of production per city, which is very, very respectable. Very, very respectable. Okay, we got a man at arms in Susa. Let's go for the armory. No, what we we need to build the aqueduct so that we can give production to the city of Kutaisi. Our cities need to start cooperating. We're, we're not going to go for monarchy. What we want to go for is theocracy. Although we could dip into monarchy for a couple turns to get started on like the 
buildings that we want. I'm going to cancel the trebuchet in the capital and get started on the Diplo Quarter. And I want the Diplo Quarter right here because if you build the diplomatic quarter adjacent to the capital city, or adjacent to the city center rather, you'll get plus one envoy. You can see it there, um, plus one envoy if it's built next to the city center. Also, it makes your enemy spies operate at a lower level, which is useful in the capital, particularly if you have Pingala. They can't assassinate Pingala and take him out. And But we also get plus one diplomatic favor for each delegation or embassy to foreign civilizations. And once we build the Diplo Quarter, we'll be able to build the juicy consulate building, which is plus two influence points per turn. Those plus two influence points will really help us out in getting control of city-states. Uh, we are playing Owls of Minerva, which benefits greatly from interacting with city-states um, and spies. So definitely going in sort of a spying city state -y kind of direction. Uh, my game is a little bit incongruent in the sense that I'm going for and doing things that don't necessarily all fit together in a very perfect way. But that's one of the big advantages of playing Persia is that this, this is the kind of save that can kind of do that. We're going to go ahead and send a trade route from Ur to Pasargadei. Boom. We definitely need like some traders down here. So finding a city where I could produce traders like Akalaki. Akalkalaki would be fantastic. So getting those traders out to the front line to help out these other cities is going to be really, really useful. As Because like this empire that I inherited from Sumeria, it just it needs so much basic infrastructure, so many builders that I just, I, I can't even really afford to, to send that infrastructure down there to help it out. Um, so let's go ahead and upgrade you to a man at arms. I think I've upgraded enough units to the next tier. So I'm going to drop professional army. And I think what I wanted to put back in is raid. All right, charioteer. Oh, a toa. Let's, well, I guess I don't mind paying full price for this man of arms because it's only one. There was a little bit of a volcano eruption over here. That's fine. We've got four more turns until Dido is ready for war. I'm going to squeak out a little friendship with our good friends, Caesar and Pericles. I will take border control treaty. Usually you'll win that if you do that. And then I would like great generals to be earned faster. It'll be kind of fun. I don't really care about what that's going to do. The city of Eridu just isn't ever really going to be able to ever do much so perhaps the best thing it can do is just make builders forever that i can transport around my empire and like it's never going to have very important yields i mean i guess I, in theory i could get a campus in here and start to build up a little bit of science but really what i think the biggest value of a city like eridu is to just passively produce a very small amount of science and culture while being able to be a place where that little bit of production that's produced is sent elsewhere to help out other cities. This is a support city. It's just, it doesn't do much on its own. It's just not a good enough city. Um, but the fact that I'll, I'll get like passive builder income is really, really useful for like scaling up the power of the rest of my empire. So do any more of my cities need traders? I think I want to keep trading with Akkad because I want to keep building up those envoys. I want to have a really, really strong hold of Akkad because they're basically the thing that allows me to take out cities with my melee units. Because the fact that, like, Akkad gives me the ability to do full damage to city walls with melee units is insane. Okay, Consulate is complete here. Plus two influence per turn. Plus two faith. That's amazing. Um, let's go for the university. That's plus four science per turn. I will hold on to my envoy as well. Although, actually, if I put an envoy into Hattusa, that does mean we get plus two signs in our universities, um, which basically doubles the value of this university. But then again, should I not just make more builders in here to help improve my empire? I think the more builders thing is, like, important. Industrial zone completer than Kutaisi. Let's get the... Well, we should totally repair the temple because that's six faith per turn. And then we'll get to work on the workshop. Reformed church is two turns away. Let's repair that aqueduct. Drop a sheep on this tile in the capital to give it a little bit of production, a little bit of uh, food. We're so close to a golden age too, actually, uh, which is kind of exciting. We're just about to go for banking, so we'll have access to the Gilded Vault, and then we're probably going to follow up going for bombards. Uh, we will need to settle the desert for Niter, I think. Uh, that's going to become a big priority for us. So I'll probably buy a settler with pillaged gold because they're only 560 per gold for me, uh, because I haven't built that many settlers, so their price hasn't gone up very much. Okay, Reformed Church is completed. We have access to Theocracy now. So let's go ahead and plug in Theocracy. What Theocracy is going to do for us is it's going to allow us to purchase units with faith uh, cheaper once we get the Grand Master's Chapel. So let's switch to Theocracy. Boom. Now we lose the 20% experience bonus from Oligarchy. We basically get to keep our government essentially the same. Now we do need to kind of shuffle things around. Like for example, we're going to have to take out retainers for now and plug in Conscription because we absolutely need to have Oligarchic Legacy plugged in here for the plus four combat strength on our melee units. We're a very melee heavy army. Serfdom, Urban Planning are great cards right now. Other possible cards we could plug in. Things like Caravanseries to get those extra... Um, get that extra little bit of gold from our trade routes. 
town charters for commercial hub adjacency. Um, I do feel like charismatic leader for that plus two influence points per turn is fantastic. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with the government that we have. It does a good mixture of getting me gold, getting me pillaging bonuses, getting me a little bit of production, better builders, which are important for building up your empire, and then a little bit of unit combat strength. I do think that Wars of Religion might be better than Conscription because that plus four combat strength when fighting a civilization that follows another religion is actually just kind of insane because Phoenicia actually does not follow our religion. So it could be a plus eight combat strength. Let's see if we can sell some stuff for some gold per turn um, to people I'm not planning to go to war with. Yeah, just sell off everything. Uh, even our iron, we can totally sell that off for a bit of cash. So now we're up to 100 gold per turn. Let's double check to see if there's any luxuries we can buy. And there's a ton of luxuries we can buy, which should be able to bump us up to a slightly happier position. Dido is going to get the surprise war declared and in the next episode you are going to see the sheer level of destruction that a massive massive army can reap upon the phoenician empire i want to thank you guys very much for watching i love you all very much and i'll see you guys next time bye bye <laughs>